It almost has the markings like a big copperhead. Oh, look at him. Oh, look at him. Getting out. Look at how fast he crawls out. All right, guys, this is a different one. Welcome to Real Cool Adventures. If you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Today, we're after the ball python. This is my buddy Jake the Snake and little Luke the King. They constantly get phone calls. Jake owns a pool company, and he's my go-to guy, or has been in the past. When I need to find little turtles and stuff for kids, um, he always finds them the skimmers. But we're gonna show you something completely different that it's becoming more and more common in this area. It's these pythons, boa constrictors, all types of predators that are not, not supposed to be here, but they're starting to find them. These are brought here from the pet trade. They're really friendly. They won't bite, will they? Nah. Probably won't bite you. <laughs> um, they can feel your body heat. They like to get around you. If you're out here laying out, this thing would literally come and just come around you. Or if you're in a toilet, it might sense your body heat and try to come up out of the toilet and eat you. But hopefully that's not gonna happen today. This guy is trying to get back away. And they are really, really friendly. That's a full grown, now, full grown specimen right there. That somebody, this was a pet. Uh, they probably couldn't afford to feed it anymore. Uh, rats are twelve dollars for a dead one. Uh, yeah, they. Yeah, they make really good jewelry. All this natural habitat in the background. Jake thinks that people come here once they can't afford to feed their snakes, turn them loose, and now they're starting to infest all the houses all over Jupiter. Shake's gonna show us the exact type of environment that these things thrive in. Um, one of the main things that he finds them in is near and around pool heaters. That's the number one source of energy. They like to get around there, pull all that heat in, stay alive, and mass produce up and down the state. But look at this. Look how camouflaged this guy is. He's going right back to where he was. Customer called me and uh, asked me, hey, I got a big snake in the backyard. W what kind of snake do you think that is? immediately when I saw the markings, I said, that's a python, uh, which you never know what you're gonna find around here. There's, he's already. As you can tell by Jake's hat, he's been in this game for quite a while. He's born and raised here. So look how that thing can just flatten its body out, squeeze underneath any rock, crevice, anywhere it wants to go to find food or to hide. And I would imagine that these things, when they're babies and they're that small. Look how flat his body is right there. An animal would just inhale that. Um, I've seen, we see a lot of snakes in hawk's mouth. And, oh, look at that. I think there's anything else under there? Might be. And another thing with this style snake, they don't produce as many babies. So they don't, a lot of people don't think of them as a threat. You can buy them in the local pet stores. I think it's, stupid honestly to have them down here that's just my personal opinion but the reason they don't think that these guys are that invasive or, or as invasive as a burmese python burmese python will lay up to 100 eggs where these have 10 or 11 eggs or six or something like that so it's not really a threat just like the green iguana will have 60 to 80 eggs where other iguanas only have 10 eggs these aren't as bad but um jake says no matter what it won't bite you no but, he, he ain't gonna bite yeah can you make it bite you? Nah, look. See? Too docile. And this, this was caught in the wild, and he, he ain't, unless my hand smells like a rat, he ain't gonna bite it. Hmm. And what do they primarily feed on? Rats, baby rabbits, uh, eggs, bird eggs. A lot of people are saying that these are the reason the, um, what do they call it, the owls? The burring owls? are on decline in South Florida because these snakes can go in the holes, eat the burring owls, and the move snake on. loves holes. If it can get anywhere that's gonna be warm and find a food source, you, this snake didn't get this fat from not eating. I'm thinking it's either pregnant. Uh, when, they, when they're pregnant, they don't eat a lot. Uh, so normally Ooh. these are very docile snakes, but uh, I have a feeling that this thing either just ate something really big or is pregnant. When these bite you, do they draw blood or are they? Yeah, yeah. they have razor teeth. <laughs> and the teeth all, you know, face one way, so you're not- Pull you back like an eel? You're not, yeah, you're not getting out of that bite real easy. Whoa. <laughs> they are really, I mean, I'm not really a snake person, but the markings on this guy. Yeah. 
I mean, it's incredible. Look Wait till you see my hat next year. Gonna look like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> now they say you can also go out in your yard with a black light at night, and it actually makes them glow. I've never done it, and it's a little too bright out here to try it. Um, but I don't know why people don't do that in the Everglades. That thing. And that's about four and a half. What do you think? Yeah. Four feet. Four feet, four and a half. They ain't gonna get any bigger. That's that's about the biggest of ball python I'm gonna get. You can see it's fat, fat, fat. They ain't gonna get much bigger. Cool. And they just wrap around you, won't let go. Yeah. Check that out. So moms out there that are watching this, this would be your worst nightmare. You leave your newborn baby out in the backyard, <laughs> and this thing would probably it could actually detach its jaw, wrap its face around the baby. It can eat. It, it can eat a. It, it can eat something fatter than its body. Yeah. Now its head doesn't look that big. It can break its jaw open and suck down anything it wants. A, a full-grown rabbit, mm. bird, blue heron. Blue heron. Blue heron. Won't bite you. He won't bite. He. Uh, he ain't gonna bite. And you see all these cool markings. From what I'm told. The ball python, um, they always have different markings on them. So that's why everyone in the pet trade, they call people like him, they, they know if you call the pool guy, he's always coming in contact with these up and down the whole state. So each one with different markings, they'll breed them together and they have even crazier markings. Yeah, some of these, there's you know? one at PetSmart right now, it's called a Pied uh, Ball Python, 600 bucks, $599. Yeah. And they get really good money for them. And this and then, one he thinks is full of eggs here. Then, then yeah, then you can't take care of it anymore. You go let it go in a preserve like this. Find them all the time. Which we don't recommend. Yeah, don't, don't try this at home. So we have a question for you. What should we do with this snake? Should we A, uh, turn it into a wallet or maybe some type of nice belt or a bicycle seat? Or a new hat? Or a new hat. <laughs> B, eat it. C, let it go. Or D, keep it as a pet. Go ahead and link, put that in the link down below and uh, check us out on Real Cool Adventures Instagram and we'll give you the results of what we're gonna do. Will it bite my nose? <laughs> it might, Woo. if it smells like a rat. It might. <laughs> All right, I hope everybody enjoyed it. This is Jake the Snake, Uncle Luke, and this is Real Cool Adventures and we'll see you in the next adventure.